Hi, man, Armstrong, Strong, and welcome to Back Office Teardown Lab. Do you recognize this? Of course you do. It's Clive Sinclair's ZX Spectrum, plus the one with the, hmm, I'd say slightly better keyboard, but actually it's pretty bad in itself. Um, but I bet you've not seen one of these. Yes, don't worry, it's not the uh, containment computer out of Chernobyl or something like that. This is a Russian ZX Spectrum clone. I say Russian, I think it's Soviet. And this was given to me by a good friend. And uh, I think I covered a slight unboxing video of this, a short unboxing video. So we're gonna go through that whole package in the near future, but I wanna show it to you working in that video. So before though I risk opening it, um, sorry, powering it up, um, I thought I'd better open it up, have a quick look inside just to ensure there's no, well, obviously nasty components in there. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a Spectrum. However, I guess it could be a ZX81. I really, I really don't know. Um, looking at the keyboards, I mean, does it, uh, I'm not sure what vibe you get when you look at this, because you kind of get the break space here and you, well, you symbol shift. Does symbol shift something that only exists on a Spectrum, perhaps? I don't really know. Spectrum Sinclair fans, please comment down below on that. So uh, yeah, feast your eyes on that. And actually the keyboard, despite being little uh, dimply nipply things, um, actually are pretty good. They're reasonably tactile, so that's nice. You have power, and then on the back here you can see we have Kemps, you got loads of Kemps, you got tape in out TV. Um, it came with a really nice joystick. I suspect that's the joystick port. Oh, Kempston, ha, <laughs> Kempston, right? <laughs> Um, and there you go, it's number, I think that's 10174, Axon, Axon, okay, anyway, let's uh, have a quick look inside, again, I think this is worth covering in proper detail, um, it came in a presentation case, it comes in a nice presentation case with a joystick, I'm trying to think what else it came with in the box, oh, it had a tape, which looked like uh, some copied games, and uh, what else did it have? Uh, a power supply, the world's most scary looking power supply. And I can see here, one of the screws is actually sealed. So it's sealed for our protection. So we're gonna have to try to get in there. Now you may have noticed this is actually slot headed, uh, which is a little bit unusual these days. Let's see if we can get past this wax seal. Uh, yeah, it does seem to just be like a lump of Crayola. <laughs> so I'm gonna tighten my screwdriver bit up because I'm gonna have to put a little bit more force to dig it out, I think. Um, yeah, you can see it's like a it's like a putty in there. It's It does seem to be really affecting my ability to get a good grip on that screw head though. I'm probably gonna have to clear it out and have a proper look in there. Took a bit of work, but it's finally loosened. Wonder why they did that though. It's obviously some sort of security seal, but I guess you could always put a bit of putty back in there if, if you really wanted to get in there. So I'm just gonna let the screws out. So we've got one screw, two screws. So they are little machine screws. Very nice, something you could pick up at B&Q. Assume B&Q still exist. And we've got that one screw that's being captive, captivated. And, ooh, look at this. Now that is a bit of a surprise, isn't it? I was expecting to see something way more rudimentary. Let's start with the keyboard first. And I don't think we're gonna pop this off any further. But that is quite nice. These are the sort of PCBs that you can make at home. You remember we used to make PCBs at home? That's kind of that vibe you get. That's some massive old speaker on there. And these LEDs, look, that's a really cute way. I've never seen that before. Look at the way it's had the legs bent over for each side. Very nice indeed, few resistors. Um, looks like you could service this yourself, doesn't it? It's just literally 
nice big fat ribbon cable, none of that horrible thin little nasty ribbon cable. In fact, that was something in that uh, ZX Spectrum Plus, if you recall, had a lot of keyboard issues. And I ordered a new keyboard membrane, I can't quite remember where from, maybe ZX Renew, and um, fixed that and then some other thing blew in it. It's still dead, so lost interest really. Um, now, if you are a ZX Spectrum aficionado, you might be able to tell me about uh, what we're looking at here. I see a lot of fingerprints on things. So it's got the original fingerprints from however uh, old this thing is. But you can see here, there's an EEPROM right here because it's got a little piece of blueness covering the window. But you have a chip here. It's a, I'm gonna read the number, a T34BM1, a 9212. 017 so that's whatever that is and then do you remember there was a custom chip in these um, spectrums like a ULA but this is probably a copy of them and then this one's got all sorts of markings on them I'm going to probably try to zoom in on that one for you because you're going to have to probably decipher those as much as anybody else in fact you can see both chips there in shot um, it looks to me can't really make out the top line, but I see it. Let me five two R A S C A S four seven. So that could just be um, some internal markings, and then I think the rest looks pretty standard. I, I suspect these are just regular, you know, memory chips. Uh, I'm just going to count them. One, no, there's not. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those. Eight of those ones, which are the 9201, and then you've got one here at the end, which is a 9007, next to the crystal. Then over on the other side of the board, we've got just another um, five chips here, which again, 9015, and there's one, two, three of those, and then a 9110. And then something which looks pretty hard to read, actually. It's... Um, it's, oh no, it is there. It's a K554CA. I can't rate the last letter. K554CA something. I'll zoom in. You can use some sort of image intensification software to try to work that one out. So what else do we have though on this? You notice they didn't have um, an expansion because I do uh, recall the uh, ZX Spectrums or uh, yeah, any Sinclair thing actually having expansions, they all have them. And that's what this is here and it's just not used, it just has a, a metal painted panel. Very nice though isn't it, very nicely built. So looking how this wire comes in, the wire is clearly, oh, I say clearly, it looks like it's going to the underside of the board. I'm not going to discombobulate that. I just want to have a look and check what it's doing. So this is potentially to the power supply. In fact it is. There's three pins. So we have to be really careful on the power supply output when we do uh, eventually test this to make sure it's coming out good because I'm quite confident on the other side of the board there is no power regulation. All of the components are here on the top so it's probably just feeding through. And uh, with regards to those ports, of course, we would have the cassette ports and things like that as well. So this is the Kempston port, and I'm sure this is to do with the recording. So what a nice little thing that is. Um, I'm going to uh, see if I can get it all back together. I think it's a, a jolly nice thing. I don't know uh, how many Soviet clones there were. I know that there are quite a lot of the uh, Dendies, I think it was called, you know, the family family clones um, so I suspect there would be other companies doing this I don't think it's just the one uh, again if, if as I was saying if you, if you know any information obviously please leave it below um, but as far as I'm aware these were given out as a, a prize I don't know what the competition was called it was, it was I think it translated something as little geniuses or something it was about you know smart kids or whatever and then they uh, if they won they won a whole computer to take home which is a pretty good prize really if you think of games master what did you win on that a golden joystick and that was just a you know sprayed up quick joy this is something with a, a little more use uh, for you isn't it but yeah just to show you the the difference the comparisons and again you can tell me again if it's uh, more of a spectrum than a zx81 or not but 
if you compare them size by size, it's not too dissimilar. I think it's probably um, more uh, more akin though to the original ZX Spectrum, if you remember that. It's obviously a little bit smaller than, than that keyboard, but yeah, it's a nice thing to have all in all though, as you will agree. Thank you for watching.